guys, it's Andrea from the blog Pine and Prospect Home, and today I want to talk to you guys about my vintage false scrap heritage dishes that I've been collecting for five or six years now. Um, I'm just going to share a little bit of history behind the dishes, where you can find some vintage false scrap heritage pieces of your own, and how you can tell the difference between the older dishes and the newer ones that are made today. So last week I talked to you guys about how one of my favorite thrifted finds ever was the false graph heritage dishes that I found at a thrift store one day. Um, it was not a complete set, it was kind of a bunch of odds and ends. Um, there were a couple salad bowls, there was um, a utensil container. Uh, some dishes, a couple of cups and saucers, but it was really mismatched. I just love the way that they looked. I loved the white color, I loved the lines of this particular set, so I purchased it for $12 and brought it home, and I decided to do a little research and find out what exactly I had found. Um, it didn't take very long for me, you know, to get on Google and discover that I had purchased part of the False Graph Heritage Collection. Now, um, I'm a little bit of a history nerd. I love history. In fact, my major in college was history education, so I had to look up a little bit about False Graph and sort of uh, the origin of the name and where it all started. So, actually, I found out that Johann False Graph uh, was a potter in the 1800s in Germany, which was really neat because my husband is from Germany, so I thought that was kind of cool. But he was a potter and he was having some, some trouble establishing himself in Germany at the time. While he had some relatives that had moved to America um, on the east coast there and they were encouraging him to come over and to try uh, to start up his trade, you know, over in, in America. And um, he decided to do that and he moved to Pennsylvania. And now 200 years later, Falls Graf is still creating ceramics for the home. So it's kind of a neat story where it all began. Um, but the particular set that I collect is called the Heritage Pattern. It's the White Heritage Pattern. And it's kind of neat. This pattern was created in the 1960s and it went on to become the most popular and it's actually the only false graph pattern that is still in production today. You can actually go on the false graph website and purchase uh, some of these dishes from the Heritage Collection. Now, I totally understand that the 1960s weren't that long ago. <laughs> My parents <laughs> were born in the 60s, and I'm sure they wouldn't like to be referred to as vintage, but nonetheless, they are from the past. <laughs> so, I call these dishes vintage. And the reason I do that is because the newer pieces that you can purchase today they just do not compare to the older original false graph pieces. I mean, um, one of the things, there are several things I will talk about um, today so that you can look for differences. And the very first thing that I want to talk about is the maker's mark on the bottom of the dishes. So if you are, you know, interested in collecting some heritage pieces, one of the ways that you can tell if it is an older piece is by the marking on the bottom. I have a couple of dishes here. And any heritage pieces that were created in the 1960s, for example, have the False Graf family castle um, sort of stamped on the bottom of, of that dish, which is really neat. And I have so many pieces um, just like that with that. Um, with that castle stamping on there. It says USA Foltzgraf and you'll see the castle behind the name Foltzgraf. And that's one of the ways that you can tell that your dishes are originals. Now I know that Foltzgraf um, sort of, I believe it was in 2005 that Foltzgraf took its production over to China. I'm not sure what the marks markings look like on newer heritage pieces because I've never actually purchased one. I have seen newer false scrap dishes, not a part of the heritage set, and they have like a painted, um, their name is sort of painted on the back of the dish as opposed to stamped into the piece itself. So 
Um, if you have any newer heritage pieces, maybe you can help us out in the comments and let us know. But that's one of the easiest ways to tell if it's an older piece is by looking at the bottom for that castle marking. Another way that you can tell the difference between older heritage pieces and the new ones is just by the shape of the piece and the weight. Um, I have actually found newer heritage pieces while out thrifting. I spotted them from far away and I thought, oh awesome, and I would go and pick it up and I just knew right away it was a newer piece just based on the way that it was shaped. Um, I personally feel like the newer pieces are just much thinner and they just feel a little bit cheaper in my opinion. They're not as thick, they're not as sturdy. And one of the things that could really help you is by going to the Faults Craft site, look up the heritage dishes, and just start reading the reviews that people have left. It's pretty amazing how many people agree that they just don't make them the way that they used to. There's a huge difference. In fact, people post photos with side-by-sides um, showing like the older dishes that they had and compared to the new that they ordered, and they just they just aren't the same which is sort of sad, but that's another way that you can tell the difference. The third way that you can tell the difference between older heritage pieces and new ones is by color. Um, the older pieces sort of have what's described as a pure white or a bone white color to them, and the, the newer heritage pieces sort of have like a grayish tint to them. And I have found these at thrift stores before and I thought, that's odd, the color kind of looks gray, almost sort of dingy. And sure enough, it was a newer piece. Again, refer to those photos right there on the Fultz Graph website. People have talked about the difference in color between the newer and older Fultz Graph pieces. The last thing that I thought I would touch on today is just where to find Fultz Graph heritage pieces. I have always purchased mine at thrift stores. Um, they can be very easy to look over just because they are white and when you go to thrift stores, if you've ever been thrift shopping, a lot of times the plates are just stacked randomly. Um, sometimes mugs are easier to spot because usually they're all hanging on hooks on a display, at least most of the thrift stores that I've been to. But um, it can be very easy to overlook them because they are white and they don't really pop. That original $12 set that I had purchased was really mismatched, had some random things in it. I have added to that set over the years, mostly through thrifting. Um, I remember when I came up, one time I was randomly in a Goodwill with my husband and I landed on a huge set of these little uh, teacups and saucers. I mean, I must have found like 12 of them and I put them all in the cart. Um, I probably purchased too many of them, but I mean, they were just pennies, like 25 cents each, and I had to grab them. They were the originals, they had the castle markings. So I have for the most part found mine at thrift stores. My mom, however, was antique shopping once and she knew how much I love this set and how I'd always kind of looked out for it. And she found some regular coffee mugs and I believe a couple other things as well, maybe a cream and sugar, while she was antiquing. And she sent me a picture, of course, and I said, yes, grab them. And they really weren't that expensive at the antique store either. It just kind of depends on your area, you know, where you're antique shopping. But um, we snatched them up, I want to say, for like a dollar or two a piece, um, which was a really good price. So that's where I found most of my most of my dishes. Of course, you can check online. Um, eBay has a wonderful selection. I have been tempted several times to purchase a few really beautiful pieces on eBay, but I just, <laughs> I'm so cheap and so frugal that I enjoy sort of the thrill of the hunt and digging through thrift stores and trying to slowly add to my collection. I love incorporating these pieces on my dining room shelves, obviously. They look so beautiful. Um, you know, mixed in with my blue and white Courier and Ives dishes. I love them against, you know, woods and whites. That's one of my favorite combinations. So I love how they pop against, you know, wood cutting boards. They just have a classic timeless feel. And I think they are so beautiful. And it's one of my favorite things to do is to hunt thrift stores for these dishes. I just think they're very special. And my dream one day would be to have a full set 
that I could feed my entire family with. So I hope this was a help to you. Um, it's been a wonderful hobby and just a lot of fun for me to, to look for these. So if you're new to my channel, please be sure and hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching.